image, if you're compositing it into something else, or even if you've got an, a 3D scene it's going to be built into, it will reflect everything in that environment. Um, the great thing about having the Chrome as the environment image is it gives us this nice look. Um, but we're still going to tweak a few of the settings. So just go File, Save Scene, and we'll hit IPR. Select the region around our model. Forgot to change the reflections back up to three, so we'll just put that back up. And we can close our render settings for now. Um, first things first, we want to get rid of this background here because we want it against a black background. But if you were just to delete it, that would pretty much get rid of our image based lighting so it wouldn't have the chrome reflection on it. So what we can do is just make sure it's selected and open up the attribute editor by hitting Control A and go down to render stats and uncheck primary visibility. And now when it updates you'll see that it's no longer in the background but it's still reflecting. Alright, so all we've got left to do now is render it out pretty much. Um, now having this resolution gate on here showing us what will be rendered is really good for situations like this where we're going to be picking a camera angle. Um, so I'm just rotated it up a little bit just to get more of the image in the frame. Um, zooming in, in a bit so that we've got as close up as we can without really cutting the model off. We go to the last frame just so that we can see how far the puddle spreads out. Okay, so we can probably rotate down a bit more and zoom in. Just go back to the first frame, thereabouts. Zoom in a bit more. And we'll go to about frame just near 40. Just so that we can do a quick test render. All right, I'm just going to save the scene, so control S. And just a quick test render. That's looking pretty good. I still think we can zoom in a bit more. So just back to the first frame. Um, it takes a while just because there's so much geometry and has to calculate. All right, that looks pretty good. So now it's just a matter of rendering. So if we open up our render globals, so we have to remember to change that to, I'll go the name dot number dot extension. I'm going to give it a frame padding of three because we have 120 frames and that's three numbers long. And change our end frame to 120. And by frame 100, okay. Now we just go back to render, batch render, batch render and close. Open up our scripts editor. And I'll just come back when it's finished. Alright, so now rendering's finished. Um, as you can see here, rendering complete. So just close down the script editor. Now you're going to want to preview um, your animation or view it. So what we're going to do is open up our project folder. So for me, let's just start my computer, local to C projects, but as has been previously mentioned, yours is probably. Um, in my documents under Maya and if we go into images directory make sure you go to images not image uh, and you'll see all your rendered frames there so if we open up the first one so shot one and it automatically opens up with F check so file open animation select our first shot again open and now you can preview your animation. Um, it's not playing at the full frame speed just due to my memory. But now we can 
I'm going to be creating the final animation from the image sequence in QuickTime Pro. Um, you can use programs such as After Effects or Nuke, Shake, Combustion, Virtual Dub, which is free. Um, a lot of other programs to put it all together, but I'm just doing it with QuickTime for ease of use. Um, QuickTime can't open .iff files, so I'm going to save the animation out as, I'll just create a new folder and call it QuickTime. And we're just going to save it out as a JPEG and call it um, output and put three hashes, which means it will have um, the frame padding like it did when it got rendered out, so it will say the shot number, so for the first frame it will be zero, zero, 001, for the last frame it will be 120, and that will have .jpeg at the end. Let's just hit save. So I'll pause the video until that's done, and then we'll open it up with QuickTime. Alright, it's exported all the frames. Um, you can bypass this by just rendering straight out to the JPEG format already. But I like exporting to the .iff files, um, which are your default, um, just for importing into a compositing program, um, because it supports alpha channels, whereas JPEG doesn't, as it says here. Um, but if you just wanted to bypass that, and because it's only for a test, then feel free to render out straight to JPEG rather than having to go through this conversion process. You don't have to go through the conversion process if you're using a program that supports .iff files. Uh, unfortunately, QuickTime doesn't. All right, so I'm going to open up QuickTime. Start programs. QuickTime player. Um, I may be wrong, but I believe you can only export, well, save um, videos from QuickTime if you've got QuickTime Pro, which is what I've got. Uh, if not, you can have a look at Virtual Dub, which will allow you to convert image sequences into videos, which is a free program. Um, but I'm just using QuickTime for ease of use. Alright, so I'm just going to go File, Open Image Sequence, Navigate to my directory. Under Images, Image Sequence, open our Image Sequence again, but set it to 24 frames per second, and hit Open. Alright, so it's opened up, and I'll just go File, Export, and I'm just going to save it to the desktop, um, just to access it quickly. So, just hit Save. And it just tells us that it's exporting now. And here is our final animation. I'd just like to give a special thanks to John Cox, also known as Cheese Straws on CG Talk. He helped guide me through um, the process of this effect. Um, and I'd like to thank the good guys at Video Effects Universe. It's a great forum with a small community of like-minded people. And also a thanks to Catman1245, who, without his post on Video Effects Universe, I wouldn't have even thought about attempting this effect. So thanks for watching, and I apologize for any errors that you found. Um, there will be a more advanced tutorial coming out, hopefully soon, showing you how to go from your normal male model, blending into the liquid metal model, and then forming into the puddle. Alright, thanks guys.